you might as well turn this microphone up because I'm going to sit it right here. You're going to hear me very well, the Lord's will. Amen. Amen. The Lord's will. I first want to give all glory to God because Amen. if it wasn't for God, we would not be here. Amen. And I also want to, again, thank Brother Greg Hamilton and the leadership here at Uptown Church of Christ for just allowing us to come and worship with you all Amen. and allowing us to take part in your worship services Amen. this morning. Amen. I have to say that, Brother Greg, we uh, we met also at the uh, the Midlands, Texas, the lectureship in Midlands, Texas this year, Amen. and uh, as well as Brother Alvin as well. And, and we had such a wonderful time, and, and as soon as I heard this brother speak, I couldn't wait to run up to him and ask him for his number Amen. because he had such a good spirit. So let, let, let me say this, church, to you. When you have a man of God that's leading you, you ought to support him. Where's his family? Where's his family? Is this family? Stand? You see, if you have a family of a man of God, you ought to support them as well. You ought to support this man. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just thank you, thank you, my sister. <laughs> and listen, you, you ought to support your leaders. And Brother Hamilton is a, is a great man of God. He sticks to the word. And, and what I love about him is he's a straight shooter. Pop, pop. Like he shoots straight with you. And that's what I need to grow. That's what I need to grow. If he saw me, if he say, if he see me say something, do something wrong, he a straight shooter. Pow, pow, brother Bash. We need to talk about that. And I, I appreciate that because I need somebody to hold me accountable, just like I need to hold you all accountable. Let me tell you, church, that I do not stand here today because my life is so right, but it is because the God I serve is a good God. I do not stand here because I've said all the right things. I've done all the right things, gone all the right places, but it's because the God I serve is a good God. Amen. You do not sit here today with your kids and your spouses because you've done all the right things, said all the right things, gone all the right places, but it's because the God you serve is a good God. Amen. If you look around this morning, it is a blessing to look upon the faces that are here today because when you say hello, you never know when you're going to say, when you say goodbye, you never know if you're going to say hello again. Amen. You see, church, the psalm is right in Psalm 37, verse uh, uh, Psalm 37, verses 24 and 25. He says, "I have been young, and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed." Church, he says, "I have been young, and now I'm old." I have seen some things. I have experienced some things. I have gone some places. And out of all that I've seen, Brother Hamilton, out of all the negativity in the world, out of all the things that exist on the world, yeah. the Bible says, yeah. I have not seen the righteous for Satan. Amen. Right. Amen. I want to remind you, church, that God does not have to do what he does for all of us. Amen. But God does what he does because he is God. Amen. Amen. God, and I know that you know what I'm talking about. I, I know that you know what I'm talking about, but I just want to let you know I'm thankful for God for being God. Yeah. You're getting in your car this morning wouldn't be possible if God did not allow it to happen. Yeah. Waking up to see your spouse and your children would not be possible if God did not allow it to happen. Yeah. Waking up to have a roof over your head, food on your table, clothes on your back would not be possible if God did not allow it to happen. Yeah. Being in this place this morning would not be possible if God did not allow it to happen. Yeah. So you ought to be thankful for that this morning. You ought to be thank you, thankful for Jesus that, that with all the blessings that he stowed upon us. You ought to be thankful to God that he never left you or left me and he never will forsake you or forsake me. In spite of all that you've gone through, you ought to say thank you. Again, I cannot express my gratitude enough to Brother Hamilton for allowing me to speak this morning before you all. And I want to take just one second to recognize all of the fathers. If you are a father, please stand up. If you are a father, please stand up. I'm talking about the ones that, I'm not talking about being a dad. I'm talking about being a father. Anybody can be a dad. The father that, that the ones that talk to your kid, talk to your spouse, kiss your spouse on the cheek and let them know there's nothing wrong with, 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 with a, 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 a married couple showing some affection. There's nothing wrong. Amen. Amen. I just want to, let's give our fathers a round of applause. Thank you, gentlemen. I want to let you know that 
every day is Father's Day. Yeah. And that's our Father up there. Yeah. I want to thank Brother Jared for those songs. I want to thank Brother Esaias for reading the scripture and Brother Joseph for reading the responsive reading. And I won't be long this morning, but if you follow along, I won't be long. If you don't follow along, I'm still not going to be long. Right? Let's go back to Romans chapter 12. Verse number 10. Yes, sir. If you haven't, say amen. amen. If you need help, say help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. You to help me, Lord. <laughs> Romans, chapter, <laughs> Romans chapter 12, verse number 10. The Bible says, Paul writes through the inspired word of God, he says, Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor. <laughs> I want to emphasize that the last three words, preferring one another. The NIV says, be devoted to one another in love. Honor, and, uh, honor one another above yourself. The ASV says, in love, a brethren be tenderly affectioned one to another. In honor, preferring one another. This morning, I want to speak to you about the subject of faith built up through fellowship. Of right. faith built, built up through fellowship. Yes, sir. Solitary confinement is the worst form of punishment uh -huh. because no one survives alone. Solitary confinement, brothers and sisters, is the worst form of punishment because no one survives alone. Right. We need each other. Yes, sir. You were not designed to be an island unto yourself. Right. And every once in a while, when you think that you don't need anybody but you, I want you to go to the mirror and just as you get out the shower and before you get dressed and put on your clothes, I want you to pay close attention to your navel. Or as the country folks might say, your belly button. And I want you to be reminded by looking at your belly button that you started your life connected to another human being. And we spend the rest of our lives trying to get reconnected to somebody because God created us as relational people. From the beginning, God saw and God said it was not good for man to be alone. So God created him a suitable help me. Creation went from good to very good, not when God made the sky blue or the grass green or the birds to sing. Creation went from good to very good when he created a soul mate for Adam. Whether you're married or you're single, you need relationship with other people. I know that we have a need for interdependence, but somebody needs to remind you from time to time that the church of Christ, the church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is a fellowship because we need each other. Let me give you some examples. Adam needed an Eve. Sarah needed an Abraham. And Abraham needed a Sarah. Jonathan needed a David. Yeah. Moses needed an Aaron. Yeah. Ruth needed a Naomi. Y'all at home with me? Yeah. Peter needed a James and John. Uh -huh. Mary needed a Martha. Uh -huh. Barnabas needed a Paul. Uh -huh. Abraham needed a Lot. Yeah. David needed an Abathar. Uh -huh. Daniel needed a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh -huh. Timothy needed a Paul. Paul needed an Epaphrodite. Yeah. Even Jesus himself. Yeah needed Peter, James, and John. Amen. Let me make this a little clear. Brother Bash needs Brother Hamilton. All right. Brother Hamilton needs Brother Estes. Uh -huh. Brother Anthony needs Brother Bash. Uh -huh. Look across from each other. You need each other. All right. Amen. So why do you think that you don't need nobody? Amen. Let me remind you that nobody that is called a human being was designed to be a lone ranger. So the Holy Spirit commands that we be kindly affection one to another right. with brotherly love, yeah. preferring one another. Yes, sir. 
as the Message Bible says, be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing the second fiddle. In order to really have fellowship with other people, you need to see other people more important than yourself. You have to learn how to practice playing the second fiddle. This morning, let's talk about what it means to be in fellowship. And I want to use three things to frame our lesson this morning. I want to talk about the context of mutual fellowship, the characteristics of mutual fellowship, and ultimately talk about the challenge of mutual fellowship. Y'all at home with me? Let's not overlook the obvious. This is a command. The command is to be devoted one to another. This was not written to the world. This was written to the church. And just in case you don't understand that, go back to Romans chapter 1, verse 7. To all that be in Rome, uh -huh. beloved of God, called to be saints. Mm -hmm. Somehow, Paul has to remind the church at Rome, like we have to remind our fellowship, remind us from fellowship, our fellowship from time to time, that we ought to be concerned about the level of fellowship that we have in the body. Yeah. The context of fellowship. A brother Cole, Stephen Cole says, true Christianity is an experience rooted in revelation and realized in relationship. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again, Brother Bash. True Christianity is an experience rooted in revelation and realized in relationship. Mm -hmm. Relationship with God and relationship with other people. Yes, we are to fellowship with the Father, but we must also fellowship with the family. Is that all right? You cannot love God. You cannot pray to God. You cannot sing to God. You cannot worship God and not build fellowship with the children of God. Amen. That's why we have the Lord's Supper, which is an intricate part of our worship to God. You see, Brother Hamilton, that's why the Lord's Supper is to remind us that, yes, we need each other, but we also need God. And in fact, this fellowship with God is so significant that it's called the communion. Right. Webster's definition for communion is intimate fellowship. That's what, that's what we enjoy with God, and that's what we enjoy with each other because of the cross. Amen. We have intimate fellowship when we come here together on the first day of the week to gather. Yes, we ought to fellowship with God, but we ought to fellowship one with another. The reason I believe, this is Brother Batch, the reason I believe that the church is in an unhealthy place is because we attempt, listen to me good, brothers and sisters, we attempt to do all of our fellowship at church. That's why I believe that the church is in an unhealthy state. It's because we wait till Sunday to do all of our fellowship. The word fellowship, which is the Greek word koinonia, koinonia, which is to share in common. It means that to be a sharer or a partaker or a participant in communion. And you know what we have in communion? We have Christ. Amen. We did not come looking for each other. I didn't come looking for Brother Hamilton. I didn't come looking for you or you. You didn't come looking for me. You know what? I came looking for Christ. You came looking for Christ. And guess what? We all got each other. Amen. Whether you like it or not. You can't choose who your mother or father is. Right. You can't choose your brother or your sister. Yeah. But if they're looking for Christ and you're looking for Christ and you found Christ, guess what? We all got each other. Amen. Fellowship says we have something in common. We are on a journey together all right. to conform to the image of Jesus. That's what brought us here together. We're like two people in a ship. We're on a journey. We're on a journey together, and we're on a journey to conform to the image of God. And if we're two people on a ship, guess what? We need each other. And it's going to be a hard, stressful, boring journey if we can't get along. Now, that ought to be our motivation for us to get along. You see, I can't get to heaven by myself. You can't get to heaven by yourself. So we might as well try to get along. Amen. The characteristic of fellowship. The characteristic of fellowship brings enrichment. There is so much, brothers and sisters, we can learn from each other. Amen. And there is so much we can pass on to each other. 
None of us on this journey are so wise and independent that we can make it by ourselves. Because you have some enemies and I have some enemies. And because you have some enemies and I have some enemies, we all share the same enemies. It's the world, the flesh, and the devil. Yeah. Brother Anthony, mm -hmm. you got some enemies, I got some enemies. Yes, sir. It's the world, the flesh, the and the devil. Mm -hmm. And you see, sometimes, brothers and sisters, your biggest enemy is you. Yeah. You got security to get me out of here? <laughs> all right, all right. Yes, we all have the same enemies, the world, the flesh, and the devil. But sometimes you take stuff out on others but sometimes you take stuff out on yourself and you don't even know. Amen. Somebody need to be standing up today. Some of y'all need to be standing up after this message and be like Jonah. Y'all remember when Jonah got on that ship and all that ship began to have all these troubles? Well, some of y'all need to be like Jonah and be judgment day honest and say to your spouse, the trouble with us is me. Amen. Some of y'all need to go to your best friend and say the trouble with us is me. Some of y'all need to go to these children and these babies say the trouble with us is me. Some of y'all need to go to your job and tell your boss the trouble with the job is me. Some of y'all need to go to your community and say the trouble with this community is me. And some of y'all need to come to the church, amen, and say the trouble with the church is me. Fellowship brings encouragement. Fellowship brings encouragement. That's why Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 through 10 says that two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Amen. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. Amen. Let me tell you something. When you fall and you by yourself, you really can't lift yourself up. Right. Especially when you knocking your own self down most of the time. Amen. We need encouragement. That's why we have to come to Bible class and take notes. That's why we got to come back on when, at, at any time the doors of the church is open. That's why we got to be here on Sunday morning. That any time that the doors of this building is open and the Uptown Church of Christ is doing something, you ought to be here. Amen. Fellowship brings enrichment. Fellowship brings encouragement. We know that the Bible says in Hebrews 10, 24, uh, 10, 24 to 25, we know about it, uh -huh. but we ain't doing it. And we love to run in the church of Christ. We love to run the 10, Hebrews 10, 25 and talk about that forsaken of the assembly. And we're just true. We ought to be here. We ought to be assembling together. But my brothers and sisters, look at verse 24. Verse 24 says, let us consider to do what? Provoke. <laughs> to provoke. You see, brothers and sisters, most of us like to provoke people to wrath. Yeah. Most of us like to provoke folks to anger. Amen. And most of us like to provoke folks to madness. Amen. But when we provoke folks, we like we like to make folk, folks mad. But tell me this, in verse 24, why can't we provoke folks to some love and good works? Amen. Why can't we provoke folks to some goodness and kind words? Why can't we provoke folks to put some patience and understanding? You, you hear what I'm saying? Amen. Let me read 1024. It says, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love yeah. and to good works. Uh -huh. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, you really need people in your life Amen. that's going to provoke you to do what's right. Amen. You need to stop hanging with folks around you that's going to agree with you when you're wrong. Well, well, well. Tell me. Say that again. What? No, I'll say it again. You need to stop hanging around folks who's going to agree with you when you're wrong. Amen. What kind of friendship do yeah. you have yeah. if the only people you want to be around are the folk that agree with everything you do and you know it's wrong? Yeah. And when you wind up in some deep addiction, and you wind up in prison, and you wind up on the streets, Amen. hooked on drugs and alcohol, and you turn around to Brother Hamilton, and, 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 and you say, why didn't y'all help me, Brother Hamilton? But you remember, you the one that chose the folks to support you when you were doing wrong. I didn't come here to make no friends. I got friends. You need at least one person, Brother J.
Jared, mm -hmm. in your circle of friends, That's right. to be a provoker. That's right. I would suggest you have three, but if you need, but you gotta have at least one person that's gonna provoke you to some love yes. and some good works. Right. Amen. Fellowship <laughs> brings encouragement, enrichment, mm -hmm. enrichment. Fellowship brings encouragement, and fellowship brings enjoyment. Mm -hmm. Some of you may have heard that old saying, pleasure shared or pleasure double, just as sorrow shared or sorrows double. Mm -hmm. You see, it's more fun to laugh when there are others to laugh with you. Yeah. And it's sure a heck of a lot easier to cry when there are others that are crying with you. You see, life has a way of bringing us trials and tribulations and when we going through trials and tribulations, brothers and sisters, we need each other. Amen. When our hands become tired, we need each other. Yeah. We need each other when our feet become weary. Yeah. We need each yeah. other. We yeah. need each other when our eyes become dim. We need each other when our shoulders become droop and our load becomes heavy and our way hard and our path seems steep and, 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 and sorrow strikes. We need each other. We need each other when problems pound us. We need each other when burdens blast us. We need each other when, when we're ambushed by adversities. Yeah. We need each other when we're bushwhacked by bereavement. We need each other when we are defeated by difficulty. We need each other when we are struck down with sickness. We need each other when we're thrown down by trouble. We need each other when we're held down by hardship. We need each other when we fall into temptation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We need each other. Good job, sir. I'm talking about a faith built up through fellowship. That's why the scripture says those who have fallen away those who have fallen into sin. Yeah. You who are spiritual, do what? Restore. Such a Restore such a one. Amen. We are eager to go to, in the church of Christ and abandon folks when they're down. Yeah. We are the only army, Brother Hamilton, in the whole world that like to kill off his dead, so, kill off his wounded soldiers. My Lord. We're the only army in the whole world that like to kill off his wounded soldiers. I say we need each other because we church our fellowship. And whether you like it or not, all of us have some demons. Yeah. I have some demons and you have some demons. Yeah. When you obey the gospel of Christ, the Holy Spirit moved in. The Holy Spirit moved into your tabernacle. That's why the Bible said when you were baptized, you received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the last time I checked, when you receive something, you first of all don't have it in the first place. Amen. So the Holy Spirit, through baptism, moves into your tabernacle. But the one problem is, is that that old man doesn't move out. <laughs> so those old demons didn't get drowned in the water. Let me say that again. Those old demons didn't get drowned in the water. They still live there. But the only difference is, is that the Holy Spirit is in that house with them old demons. And every once in a while, Brother Alvin, every once in a while, the old demons creep, pick up their head. Start looking at you. What can I do? But see, here's the thing. When we got baptized, the Holy Spirit moved in. And now that started our battle between the flesh and the spirit. Everything in the flesh is evil. Everything in the spirit is good. So there's a battle constantly going on. You see, the fact of the matter is we're constantly improving and getting on and, and, and getting better. But we're not there yet, church. You're not, we're not there. I've learned that life's battles are fought with self. The Bible refers to that battle as the war between the flesh and the spirit. And the, and, and the flesh represents your worst self. And the spirit represents your best self. Right. That's why Galatians chapter 5 says that they are, uh, they are at enmity with each other. There's a war going on. And if you look at your life, you have a battle going on besides you between the flesh and the spirit. Yes, because sir. the one that is the healthiest is the one that's going to win. Yes. You feed the flesh more than you feed the spirit, the flesh will win. You feed the spirit Boy, more than you feed Boy, the you flesh, teach it. Boy, you teach it. the spirit will win. Listen, in order, listen to me well, brothers and sisters. In order to defeat our demons, we first have to figure out what your demons are. Amen. The problem is, is that some of us don't even know what our demons are. Amen. And if you want to know what your demons are, ask the folks who have to deal with you. Yeah. <laughs> Brother Hamilton, what's going on? You see what I'm saying? 
what I'm saying, church? Brothers that are married, you want to know what your demons are? Ask any of these wives in here. Children, you want to know what your demons are? Ask your parents and grandparents and guardians. In order to defeat your demons, you first have to know, find out what your demons are. And your demons will be used by Satan to destroy your life. Church fellowship is important. Church fellowship is important. I want you to, con I want you to consider this. And I'm going to give you an example. Most of us have not been able to figure out what our demons are. And I think it can be best described as a battle between appetite and judgment. Let me make that clear. I think the best way to help us determine if something is a demon or not, my sister, is to look at your appetite and your judgment. All right. That's the real war for you. That's the real war for me. You see, we don't all have the same appetite. If your appetite, in other words, if you're hungering for uh, whatever it is you're hungering for, if it's anger, if it's sex, if it's power, if it's control, if it's money, if it's materialism, if it's lust, whatever it is you're hungering for, that's your appetite. Y'all at home with me? All right. Almost All right. done. All right. So the war is between your appetite and your judgment. Right. Because any time your appetite Right. Causes you to use bad judgment, mm -hmm. that might just be a demon. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Anytime okay. yeah. your appetite mm -hmm. causes you to use bad judgment, that just might be a demon. I should not be able to do wrong and it not bother me. Right. You should not be able to do wrong and it not bother me.